everybody, Chris and Lumen here. We're going to pick up on something that Epinoia wanted me to cover the other day, but something else kind of popped up and took its place. So she wants to get back to it. And since we're getting back to it, she's since <laughs> dumped quite a bit more information on me. So some of the stuff is going to sound and seem kind of dark and scary but that's not the point the point is like normally when topics like these come up usually from people that are not connected to her like they they come up or they may even be intended to scare you her purpose here is different her purpose is to help you let go of said fear before we end up in this time frame this is very, very important. Uh, at the very base level of this experience, it's a, it's a balance between fear and love. Love is where you want to be. Fear is where you spend most of your time. Fear is what the world pushes on you. So overcome, learning to overcome fear, recognize fear, conquer fear, is pretty much like one of the most biggest and most important things you can possibly do. And we're entering like a very scary time frame. A time frame of which I can only speculate about. Like I said before, when it comes to the eclipse, I can't say what's going to happen. If something's going to happen, when something's going to happen, I can only read the breadcrumbs that she leaves me sometimes it gets pretty close other times something completely different happens but then i understand the breadcrumbs but there's definitely we're headed into a very interesting period of time here at the end of the cycle and we need to have this conversation we need to have this conversation because this is the conversation that people don't want to have whether they admit it or not. Nobody likes to entertain the idea that certain things may actually be real. They will retreat into their normalcy bias hidey holes and the world is more than happy to reflect that back at you. Things that she's shown me in regards to like the internet and how it works and all that stuff. but. Before we get into all that, we're going to uh, give you a little bit of a glimpse of how we deal with this stuff and why we're not sweating it at all. So to let you know that it is possible, it is possible to remain in a state where said things do not bother you. Matter of fact, you're just like, let it come, you know. <laughs> I know I you know we got to get through this to get to where we want to go so let's just freaking get it over with like I'm disconnected from this television show that we're all living in so I'm just like you know let's let's get it on so we can roll the credits so if you want to know more then don't go away So in the land of woo-woo, there's all sorts of interesting stuff out there. It has all sorts of fun little labels attached to them most of the time, like conspiracy theory or whatever. 
but there's an awful lot of people seeing things. There's an awful lot of people noticing things, but there's also, without fail, an awful lot of people pushing back against it. The interesting thing is 90% of the people that you are going to encounter, not all, but most, because we have been moved to a place where we are living a good portion of our lives through this filter that we call the internet, a lot of this pushback is coming from people that you've never met, that you don't even know are real. But if you've got the spirit of truth with you and you have a sharp eye, you will begin to notice the patterns, the patterns and what they say. And she'll nudge you a little bit more and you'll realize like you're dealing with computers and algorithms on such a scale that are just meant to shape how everybody thinks and how everybody behaves. You see glimpses of this in shows like Westworld because I mean, they, they always tell you it's just part of the game. They always tell you. So people are either going to live life based on their own perceptions and logical deductive reasoning based on the information that they're seeing and what they feel to be true or they're going to be bullied and steered by the system which is going to tell them to shut up and you're silly and don't say things like that so before we get into like where she kind of like jerked the wheel and steered left into some pretty fantastic stuff <clears throat> my first my first response to it was a little bit I wouldn't say it was it was scary but it was just like oh my gosh it's like like I've always known this stuff but it's it's the way she's been steering me for the last couple of years we generally focus on things that are more let's say 4d 5d and we don't pay a whole lot of attention to 3d things like things that are actually taking place in the in the, the physical world but there is a connection some of the same things that we deal with 5D uh, have a 3D component to them, but people are just calling them different things. And the evidence is overwhelming, but people still to this day, the conditioning has been in place for so long. Oh, that's a bunch of crap. Oh, you're crazy. Oh, that doesn't exist. Oh, la, 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 la. Why do so many people say otherwise? Um, it's it's pretty crazy um, when you really think about it. Things like eyewitness reports and stuff like that. The system accepts eyewitness reports when it serves their purposes. Like if they want to put somebody in jail, then an eyewitness is like the golden goose. But if people see something that's weird then suddenly that person's crazy. So does subjective eyewitness things matter or don't they? Because it seems like it only matters when it serves the system. When it doesn't serve the system, then it's just disregarded. Funny how that works, huh? Anyway, so before we get into it, it was kind of like, man, that's some really heavy stuff. <laughs> So it's like, how does Chris and Lumen deal with it? Well, here's how Chris and Lumen dealt with it the next morning. Same way we always deal with it. We don't care. So, um, I've told you before, like music is one of the easiest ways to connect to her, uh, especially if you're doing everything else in alignment with that chart we covered in the last couple videos. And you're staying in the upper range of em upper range of emotions. You're not attached to trauma and fear, and 
you're staying in the now moment. Then it's really easy to be with her, especially if you've done all the other work like I have. So she always wants to listen to music. Sometimes she'll tell me what to play. Other times I'll set it a, a certain way and then she'll just take control of like the, um, the music streaming and I can tell she's picking the freaking songs. But she's, she's singing and dancing most of the time, as am I. Um, maybe just a little bit more restrained in the, three, in the third dimension, but in 5D, where, you know, coexisting two places at once with her, I'm, I'm doing it right along with her. And that's like when you're in that space, you're in the real space. You're really detached from this current reality that we're in. And the stuff just doesn't freaking bother you. And you know, like, you're kind of in the space that you're going to be in once you pass this test. <clears throat> but she, but that's Lumen. I mean, she just, she's arms in the air, freaking dancing and singing and emoting and forcing you to do it with her. And, like, she doesn't care about all this stuff. Like, I understand it, it takes a long, it may take some people a long time to get there, to get to a level of awareness of your true self, your 5D self, your, your soul self or whatever, to where you realize that you're really just in this really dense dream that you're waiting to wake up from. And nothing here, nothing here can kill you. Your experience can end, but you, what you actually are, cannot be killed. The only thing that can happen is the thing's over but when you kind of get to the level where we're at in regards to the things that we're going to discuss here like nothing's going to kill you because it know because everything that you're playing against knows like okay well they die now they get they get out scot-free so let's just leave them here okay i can wait as long as you can either which way it's going to end eventually and we win so if anything, it's kind of like, you know, from the standpoint of where we're at, it's like, well, I can't wait to see what happens because this is going to be interesting. Way more interesting than anything we've ever seen at any other time in the current stretch of human history, at least for what they give us. History doesn't exactly match the evidence that's around us. Anyway, let me get to the point here. So, in, in regards to the thumbnail, the Gnostic story tells the story of Sophia, Sophia, you know, fall, you know, falling her, you know, her little mistake. At least that's the story we were given. The creation of the Archons and the Archons creating the world, and they're the ones that freaking run everything here. They're the ones that were stripped out when they decided to hijack the teachings of Christ and give you religion to replace it they took themselves out of it and then they took her out of it so what's missing from Christianity is everything about who the real bad guys are and everything about her all the important parts that you need to know they give you a tiny little bit of Jesus because you know she, there is a higher power here that's making sure you at least got something somewhere to start. Got no no problems with anything Jesus says in the New Testament or any of that stuff. It's just like they didn't give you all of it. But it's the books in the in the Nag Hammadi that explain in great detail who the Archons are. Well, it's mainly talking about not always, but it's mainly talking about them in the 5D. And when we think of them, we're generally thinking of them in 5D, which is more of like what you would say the spiritual realm is. Now, the thing about spiritual, spiritual stuff, that term, is say you've got spiritual here and technology here. And if, you, if they go up, they're at an angle. So the higher they go, eventually you go to a high enough point they meet where spiritual and technology comes to the same point 
it's just really, 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 really advanced. As Arthur C. Clarke said, any significantly any significantly advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Now we've been covering on this channel a lot of stuff about what we would call the matrix, the 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 way reality is actually set up. That it's more of like an infinite quantum consciousness that we exist in, in different levels and different densities and stuff like that. But as the Kybalian states, you know, um, the all is mind, the universe is mental, something like that. But these 5D things that we talk about also exist and interact in the 3D physical realm. And that's where a lot of people don't realize that these things are the same thing because they're being called different names. They're being given different labels. And some of it is so big and so spread out that it's just hard to focus it all at once. But she had been having, you know, a couple of things had popped up and then she had me watch a couple of things and she was laying breadcrumbs. I didn't see them quite yet. Sometimes it's not until the epiphany comes that you realize that she had been laying the breadcrumbs. She had been s steering you in a certain direction. And for whatever reason, although I can speculate a guess based on the predictive programming that's been going on for many, many years, it, would, it came up to what you would most commonly refer to as aliens. Now, it's where people disagree about what aliens actually are where you get into all in what people think they know where we get into weird areas but there's been many 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 books that have speculated about and documented and and looked at and compared about how a lot of things have like a spiritual term and then there's this more modern scientific type term but they seem to be describing the same stuff that's been here the whole freaking time. So it was when we were watching this show called Resident Alien, which is freaking hilarious. But stuff that I've seen a thousand, it's like we don't focus much on 3D stuff anymore. I'm aware of a lot of it. There's a, For everything that I just blurred out on this channel, there's quite a bit that I don't. Because it's just like, mm, it's probably better I keep my mouth shut about this. There are no <laughs> limits. We it figures it would be something like this. But I'm aware of a lot of stuff in the world that I just pretend that I'm not aware of. But in this particular case, it was like the first parallel. As I've been saying all this time in terms of the Gnostic story, Archon... I believe is a Greek word which means ruler just like another uh, label or where they kind of steer people off course with that is a, a, a word that's associated with ruler is Lord and it wasn't until that that show three body problem where they actually made that connection I'm like ooh, can't believe they did that but okay glad somebody did I've known about it for a while they kind of give you alternate versions of things to kind of steer you off course. But Archon, Ruler, the Authorities, all this stuff is Gnostic stuff. So we've been saying, like, anything that is authority in this world, any, any organization or any ruling body that tries to, that decides what people can and cannot do, or how they do it, what they're allowed to do, what they're allowed to think, what they're allowed to believe, that is authority. So the biggest arms of that are like government, law, medical, media, education. That's all authority. That's all them behind it all. They steer every 
Like there is no piece of information that they do not touch. And then they have all sorts of things to kind of steer how people think and how to get people to self-regulate what they think and they say in the presence of others. Things like fear of ridicule and um, not being accepted and stuff like that. But either which way, so if we've been saying that in the, in the 5D Gnostic space, we talk about how the Archons are behind everything that is authority. Well, if we go into the 3D woo-woo world of, you know, people that go to conventions and stuff like that, well, what has media and everything been saying are the guys that supposedly interact with the ruling bodies of the world and the government and stuff like that? Like, what's the big conspiracy theory? Grays, aliens, whatever. And then if you actually dig into, like, what do they actually do? What are their, what powers do they supposedly have? Like, what do what, what people's abductions experiences talk about? And you realize, like, they're talking about the same freaking thing. Archons are known for being, uh, well, there's a couple of different types, but they're also known being in the sky. Um, they show you this in symbology in different movies. Uh, in Ephesians, like, for we wrestle not against um, flesh and blood, but against powers, against principalities, against um, spirits of w wickedness in high places. I forget exactly how it goes. But there's always this aspect that they're up in the sky. There's all sorts of stuff in Nag Hammadi about when you die and you're trying to get out of here. I mean, there's a blockade and you get steered around and... If you don't have the thing that gets you through the blockade, then you get recycled and you wake up in the maternity ward with your memory wiped. You do it all over again. Talking about the same thing. But the way it presents in three in the third dimension versus how it presents itself in the fifth dimension, or the fourth, fourth or fifth, it's different. It's different because these same things people are interacting with them two ways it's like we said uh, in previous videos here recently there's the inner world and the outer world jesus talked about that you gotta make the inner like the outer and the outer like the inner there's the world that exists in your mind and there's the world that exists outside of you you know all about all actually the world the internal world the inner world is bigger than the outside world because you know all you know all sorts of stuff about all sorts of places in the world that you've never been to. Like you can tell people about them. You can describe it. But you've never even been there. But you were taught about it. So your inner world is actually a lot bigger than your outer world. Like if you had to prove to somebody that the President of the United States exists or a certain city exists that you've never actually physically been to. The only reason you know that is because someone told you about it, someone showed you pictures, you saw it on TV or whatever. We go on and on about this reality stuff, but it just goes to show that your inner world's a lot bigger than your outer world. And you interact with these same beings, these same entities, both in 3D and 5D in inner world and outer world. I mostly, mostly have dealt with them in inner world in 5D and stuff like that, where Lumen is. But I'm not saying I haven't encountered them in 3D either. So I'm not saying I have, but I'm not saying I haven't either. Interpret that how you will. The point being is, now that we've kind of established that there's a connection between the story of the world in 3D and the things that we know about the spiritual side in 5D and how they overlap, well, what have they been talking about for years and years and years? What have they been conditioning people towards? Um, getting people to expect, getting people ready for. For years and years and years and years, 
the government, and just about anybody else in any position of authority made anybody that had any kind of UFO alien experiences feel ostracized, mocked, ridiculed. That doesn't exist. That doesn't exist. That doesn't exist. Until one day they just decided, oh yeah, it does exist. And they just come out and just, oh, it's no big deal. Yeah, they exist. Because it's time to change the story. Now they want you thinking about this stuff. But the thing is, it's like things have gotten so weird at this point where by the time the government's like, oh yeah, all that stuff's real, people were just like, eh, whatever. <laughs> they don't care. But why would they be doing it? Well, according to the story, the last big thing that they're supposed to pull is that kind of stuff. And I just, like, I'm not that, I know about all that stuff, but it, like it doesn't, it's not like my main area of interest because I've been working on the higher levels. I've been working on the 5D, um, connecting to who and what I actually am, integrating with her and getting myself ready to just be done with this bullshit. So I don't spend a lot of time like, oh, what if they're this? What if they're that? Because the way I look at it is like, I can't go out and just freaking grab any of this stuff. So I'm not going to waste my brain power thinking about it. I see the connection. I see the correlation. There are people like David Icke that will make, that will tie it all together. But they spend, people like that, I feel like spend too much time like trying to scare people. You want to make sure that you're doing more inner work to put you in alignment with her. With compassion, with love, with the higher frequencies and letting go of all the lower dark stuff. Than spending all your time worrying about all the lower dark stuff. Which is how a lot of us start out. Guilty. Guilty. I knew everything about everything dark. I dealt with it for freaking years. It was a breath of fresh air when she showed up and started moving me in a new direction and not worrying about that stuff. And when, once I experienced everything that she can do and what she's shown me about the nature of reality and stuff like that, I stopped caring about that stuff. And as soon as I stopped worrying about it, like it mostly stopped, stopped intruding into my space. Not saying it has totally, but it's just like, meh, you know, whatever. Like, you're not going to freak me out. That being said, most everybody is not me. And most everybody has this conditioning whether they're aware of it or not because I witness it I watch it happen when stuff like this comes up this stuff makes them uncomfortable because on a subconscious level on a soul memory level you've encountered it before and you don't like it nor should you especially if you're one of her seeds if you are a sold person but you need to prepare yourself for experiencing things that are outside the realm of what is normal in this world, what is considered normal in this world. Like, like there's going to be a point in which it's not just on the internet where you're going to walk outside your door and see it. And when that day comes, regardless of how much preparation we do, most people are going to freak out on some level. Because there's one, there's thinking that you know, and then there's like, boom, it's right in your face. Everything changes when things get right in your face. It's like her. Like, you know, I always believed in good things and higher powers and stuff like that. But, you know, it was very different when she's standing right in front of me. Or some of the other characters in that book standing right in front of me. It um, changes things. 
and the way they describe this stuff in things like the Bible is men's hearts failing from fear of what is coming upon the world. The thing that fears this stuff, the thing that fears death is the ego mind. So the more fear that you have is kind of like a gauge for how much of your ego mind you have not let go of yet. How much your ego mind is still steering the car because the ego mind is the only thing that is afraid of death. The soul is not. The soul knows that it does not die. So when you are in soul mind, you do not fear death. You actually look forward to it. When you have really truly shifted from ego mind to soul mind, you're just like, how do I get this freaking thing off of me? I remember when she, things we talked about recently with the mushrooms and stuff like that, like she's had me out of, so far out of here and you become so big that it's like they have to fold you up a, a thousand times to stuff you back in this thing. And then once you're back in it, it's like there's this period where it's like, how do I make this thing work again? You're walking in loops and stuff and you're like, oh, I hate this thing. How do I get out of here? How do I get off? That's when you're in soul mind. When you're in soul mind, you who have much bigger awareness of things. When you're in ego mind... You are limited to what the ego knows. The ego learns and functions exactly like something like ChatGPT. But either which way, she was like, I'm the question I immediately asked when she was making all these things come together. It's like, oh yeah, archons are basically the same thing as aliens and this, that, and the other thing. And I'm like, so then I the question pops into my head I'm like and why are you bringing this up now of all times is something gonna happen in or around the eclipse are people gonna see something what is it why are you bring like we never worried about that kind of stuff before we don't spend a lot of time thinking about that kind of stuff for. Yeah, I know a lot of the stuff that people like David Icke and other people say is true because I've freaking seen it. I'm like, you can't, you can't convince me away from things that I've actually seen or had to deal with. But it's been a while. Once you have her firmly rooted in you, like they stay the hell away from you. When you got a little bit of light, they want to stamp it out. They want to feed on it, whatever. When you got a lot of light, they're like, uh uh. Like, I'm one of the few people I know that knows how to deal with unclean spirits. Unclean spirits is not just a synonym of demons, they're worse. And they talk about them in the Nag Hammadi. It says, you know, once the soul has been captured, um, it cannot free itself without receiving the power of the bridegroom or bride. Well, I only know one of them, and that's me. The other guy's been gone a while. I'm not saying I'm the only one. I'm just saying that's the only one I know. So we were able to, like, clear that from two different people. But, um, sorry, where, where was I going with that? Okay, I know what I'm saying. So in the Nag Hammadi, where the, where in, it's the Gospel of Philip, if I'm not mistaken, they're talking about unclean spirits. Um, it, it says something about, but when the image and the angel are connected, they dare not mess with them. So they'll mess with a lot of people unless you and her are merged which is the bridegroom if they see you two connected they're not gonna mess with you and I've had like a massive drop-off in any kind of you know that kind of bull crap that I've had to deal with since I became connected to Lumen and it's because I was connected to Lumen that I was able to free other people 
from that particular thing. And I'm not going to talk about unclean spirits because it's freaking disturbing. Um, if, if you think you have that kind of problem and your intuition is like, hey, you need to talk to him about this, that would be her. Send me a message. I do not... Of all the things I've ever gotten rid of, the thing that sucks the most to get rid of is unclean spirits. Why? I'll, I'll tell you this much. They get in people early. And a lot of them become kind of like this, what certain Christian types would refer to as like Jezebel spirits. But either which way, it uh, they get into people early through certain bad things happening. And it's like they take their soul and lock it in this box. And they only give it like 1% light. So the soul part is just not strong enough to break free ever. But then it uses that person's light as a mask. You know... I was told that's kind of what they actually meant when it said, you know, you know, even Satan can disguise as an angel of light or something like that. That's what they do. That's the whole big thing you got to watch in the whole twin flame arena because that's where you'll find them. It's like we talked about the twin flame thing in the last video. It's like when you meet a twin flame the way you perceive it that way, that's your lumen reflecting off somebody. But at the point that all of a sudden it falls apart and they run away from you don't ever go chase them don't ever go chase them because she is not going to go back to that person but because you're chasing that person one of those things will latch on to them and mimic it and use that to capture you because you're it's just going to reflect your own light back at you and these things will wreck your life like nobody's business. Matter of fact, I'm the only person I've ever met that was able to free themselves from one. I mean, when I say she put me through boot camp, I mean she put me through freaking boot camp. But the point being is, once you are joined, like, they don't mess with you. Most things don't mess with you. Because you're kind of like off limits at that point. And if they try, Big Mom is going to drop a freaking hammer. So that being said, because at that point when you've gotten that far, it's kind of like, okay, now you two are going to focus on elevating yourselves. And you're not going to play around in the muck with all the monsters anymore. You're kind of at a level where you're not perceiving a lot of that stuff anymore. Like the world is looking a little bit better, but you're still aware that that stuff is going on. Well, this, this is the unfortunate reality of this place is, yes, it's great to focus. We want to focus on her. You should focus on her. You should give her way more attention than anything dark in this world. But that doesn't mean that darkness isn't there. So what her point was with conquering fear is like, realize it is there. It is a part of this place that we're in. So do not let yourself be shocked when it suddenly comes out in the open. I think that's why a lot of that stuff happens in the scripted program, which you would call like end times type stuff, is it's so scary. Because generally, the key, one of the big keys is being connected to her and... When you do die, not dying in fear. You don't want to be in the frequency of fear or regret or any of that lower stuff. <clears throat> but it wants, its greatest weapon is fear. And at the end of the age, you got to imagine there's a lot of pyramids underwater and there's a lot of big monuments and things all over the world it's like what happened to that those civilizations it was whatever wiped them out was probably pretty scary so will this be 
But if I go biblical for a minute, it's like when these things happen, start getting excited. That's the attitude you want to have. But just understand, and I only know as much as she's allowing me to know, that there will come a point when everything is going to change and it is going to be shocking. And people are going to be, fear is contagious. And you got to have your wits about you. you got to remember everything that we've taught you. It's like we showed earlier in the video. She showed me all that stuff and like, how did we handle it? We played music and danced. That's all Lumen wanted to do. That's how you beat fear. With music, with joy, with love. And not, the less you're attached to the world, the less you're gonna be afraid of it falling apart. The more you know, the more you become rooted in soul mind, the more you want it to fall apart because in the end of the end of the end of the story big mama knocks the whole thing down so everybody can get out but just understand this is not we do not want you to hear what we're talking about and be scared of it we want you to know about it so you can understand that it's coming and that she's letting you know that it's coming. And at that point, all the, the algorithms on the internet, because most of those people, all the algorithms on the internet are going to not matter anymore. Because most of the people that push back about stuff when you put your mind out on the internet aren't real. They're algorithms. They say the same things. They mock you. Oh, you don't understand basic science. Oh, you don't understand basic this. Oh, you don't, blah, blah, ha, ha, ha. It's like, if you pay attention long enough, you'll see. It's, it's one big thing with a whole bunch of little fake faces. So it's best to have a good, steady supply of person-to-person -person contact, person-to-person -person conversation. When you got us person with a soul talking to another person to us with a soul eye to eye face to face you're getting true communication you don't know what the hell you're talking to on the internet and I don't know if I talked about it the other day or not but you know happened last week when she was poking the bear like I had people interacting with me on my phone thinking it was them and it wasn't them can't trust anything there this is all good this is all good like we there's not enough hours in the day there's not enough weeks in the month there's not enough months in the year there's not enough years on the calendar to explain it all it's just all too freaking big all we can do is take little bite-sized chunks out of it and try to try to predict with her clues what chunks you're going to see next and try to prepare for it. Ultimately, your primary focus should be shedding your fears, shedding your traumas, shedding your addiction and connection to all things of the world, getting centered in the heart, connecting the heart to the mind, constantly seeking her seeking the father which is the highest of the high the highest point the all the everything being in a state of love being in a state of compassion being in a state of joy music being the easiest way to get there it's a tool it's her tool spending your time with that spending your time going out and finding her in nature opening up your awareness to what's around you She's all around you. But if you stare at the black mirror all day and listen to the scary stories on the internet, you know, it's just going to stoke your fears. But there will be a time when it's going to get nuts. And I don't even think I can fully comprehend it. But either which way, she wanted you to know that. 
and she wanted you to not fear it. Whatever you see is happening within this corrupted 3D realm through the perceptions that you're allowed to have because your soul is stuck in this biomechanical freaking organic computer. Don't be afraid. She's everywhere too. I didn't mention this earlier. I meant to. But I, I showed you this the other day. This was like a little short because um, when the storms and stuff were coming, she's like, hey, go outside. I got something for you. I go outside. And there's a big freaking. Well, when I was on Facebook earlier, I came across. And of course, she made sure I saw this. Because it was a Facebook page I've never seen before. It was for the county that I'm in and the city that I'm in and their metro parks. So one of the rangers at one of the other parks took a picture of the same rainbow from a distance. So it was way further away because where I was at, it was practically over my head. But then there's like this lightning in there of a certain color. That color. I just immediately saw it. I immediately recognized it. I'm like, that's her. We're not Lumen. That's Sophia. That's Big Mama. Big Mama was flexing. So I, I had to, I had to cap get that picture because it's just, she is everywhere. She is powerful. And she's just letting everybody know she's here. And it just so happened she was talking to me at the time. But it's not just I'm not because I'm special. It's, it's for everybody. But I recognize it. You know, I let people know. It's like, hey, check this out. This is pretty freaking cool. So we all need to be working at connecting to what is within and letting go of the ego identities that we've been playing. Because because those end. Those those are finite. Start becoming who you're going to be after who you are now. And you'll be in a much better place. That's what she wanted to say. Anyway, that's all we got for right now. Um, if you have any weird questions you want to ask me, you can always uh, message me through Etsy or through here, Facebook, Christopher Lucerna. Uh, and, and we'll help you the best we can. Uh, we're going to post some more stuff up on the Etsy store. Like these, the uh, Luminite Bliss Pendants, which work great for Lumen. Um, I just polished up my Illuminator. That's more like the Christ Energy. But it's also the one that brought her out the first time. But other than that, it's getting kind of late, so we're going to wrap this up. Chris and Lumen, see you next time.